battling the waves and not just in the sea. Feel secure back there. One of the biggest challenges for the freshwater independent lifeboat is communication. Radio waves often struggle to get past the spectacular cliffs of the Isle of Wight coastline. Sailing Coast Guard, Sailing Coast Guard, it's freshwater lifeboat, freshwater lifeboat, channel zero, over. Back in the 1890s, Marconi came here to test his new wireless invention. Since then, of course, radio has saved thousands of lives, but it's still pretty limited. How dependable is that radio communication? Now, essentially, we're using the same technology as Marconi first invented, same frequency, same radio, so the, the technology's got smaller and more reliable, but uh, we're still limited by line of sight, and we're still limited by um, the, we can only have one-way communication at a time. You can, and if somebody else is talking on the radio, that'll drown us out if they've got a stronger signal. This is particularly frustrating for Jeremy and the crew because this lifeboat is otherwise fitted out with the latest technology, including cameras that could stream real-time rescue pictures back to base. What the lifeboat desperately need is a reliable way of getting two-way communication between here and the shore. And that's exactly what this little boat has been testing as part of a UK-wide series of trials, a new technology called TV White Space. Here, with the help of a stick and freshwater beach, is the technical bit. What is this white space technology? So white space technology is technology that takes advantage of unused spectrum that you can utilize for broadband connectivity. So if you think of spectrum, is being moving from the low frequencies down the long wave up to the high frequencies, which is visible light. You've got a couple of key points. You've got your home-based Wi-Fi, which sits here. Right. Then you've got the TV broadcasts, which are sitting down here. Now, this is prime real estate spectrum. The broadcasters weren't stupid. They put their transmissions in the place that gives them best coverage for the lowest possible power to reach the maximum number of viewers. If we zoom in in this part yeah. here, which is where the television transmissions are, yeah. it looks like this. This is BBC One. This is BBC Two. This is ITV. You get the, you get the idea. And look at this. You've got space here, you've got space there. You've got space in between the different transmissions. Why are those spaces there? They're, these spaces are there to stop these transmissions interfering with each other. Right, but that would suggest then that these spaces can't be used for anything because it would interfere with the TV signal. Not the case. You can use these spaces to deliver broadband. One of the problems you have with Wi-Fi is how does it get through to that back bedroom? How do you get it into the kitchen? It's not easy to do now. Now the reason it doesn't reach these places is because the frequency is so high. If you lower the frequency to 600, 700 megahertz, then it goes much further. Using the TV frequencies to send and receive the internet means the signal will go much, much further than conventional Wi-Fi. You could then connect up a whole village with one big white space Wi-Fi hub, bringing the internet to the thousands of households currently offline. Fraser Munro runs an internet provider on the Isle of Wight and can't wait to shift his operation into white space. Well, one of the biggest problems that's growing that we become approached with is people that are struggling to sell their houses in a rural area simply because the broadband connection isn't good enough. Everybody knows that if you have a hundred million pound super yacht, you can have super fast broadband in the middle of the Atlantic. But systems like that are out of the reach of domestic homes, offices, and of course, independent lifeboats and the RNLI, all who have to fund their own purchases. And white space allows connectivity to go much longer through much more challenging conditions but at a really affordable price. There's no confusing the centre of Glasgow with the Isle of Wight but what could help rural Britain could, it's argued, be equally transformative for our cities. Strathclyde University has been running a pilot to link their campus up with TV white space technology. I can get the Strathclyde network here, and here, and here, and here. Now, of course, the university could have used conventional technology to build their network, to get the internet in and around all these buildings of their campus, but that would have meant laying miles of big, fat, expensive cable beyond their budget. Instead, what have they done? Have a look up there. You see that TV-like aerial using TV white space technology 
to bring me the internet. The wireless revolution is just beginning. So we've set up a number of nodes on campus and, and we have a kind of white space network here so that students can pick up on their phone with, with a Wi-Fi to our white space connected base station. Now you wait a few years, you will have a white space chip in your, in your, in your mobile device and you can do mobile or Wi-Fi or white space. So as, as a research organization, we're looking into those opportunities and those designs. This is something that, that will happen. Uh, you know, it's absolutely going to be a, a great opportunity for people to be more connected because it really will be wireless everything soon. White space technology is possible partly because of advances in GPS, the geographical location of any device wanting to use vacant parts of the spectrum has to be established. This is then fed into a constantly updated database to work out which white spaces are free to use. Ofcom, who control the TV spectrum, are white space enthusiasts. When might we see this coming in for real? That's one of the things we're busy working with at the moment with people. Uh, rural broadband particularly, there was workshops taking place last week where people were trying to see how they can use it. So it's being used at the moment only in America and in Singapore. The UK is one of the leaders. We expect people to be able to use it probably from next year onwards. Next year onwards? Probably. And, and speeds that they can only dream of at the moment, I suppose? Definitely. I mean, it depends how much white space is available and how many channels you can use those places. But yes, people will get faster broadband if they use this application. Bar a few rockfalls, the cliffs haven't changed too much since Marconi stood here and brought radio to the world. Even he would surely be amazed at how far wireless communication has come since then. Some believe, though, we've barely got started. <laughs>